So heat transfer and entropy changes. So we know that water freezes at temperatures that are below zero degrees Celsius. When water freezes, how does that change the entropy of the water? It goes down because the solid is more orderly than the liquid. Is that process spontaneous? Yes, it is. So we've got an increase in entropy, but it's also spontaneous. So the second law of thermodynamics says for any spontaneous process, the entropy of what increases? Is it the system? Well, if it's the system, would water freezing at below zero be spontaneous? No. The universe. The entropy of the universe increases. So if we're not looking at the entire universe, we could have a process where entropy decreases and it may still be spontaneous. Does that make sense? So we're going to be looking at the surroundings and the system because those compose the universe. So thinking about water freezing, we're going to consider the water, the system, and then what are the surroundings? Everything else. So everything else. So uh, the second law of thermodynamics says that the I wish, you know, let's maybe do a lecture on uh, Murphy's Law, right? Where is that? Uh, Murphy's Law, if something can go wrong, it will, right? That's what I live by. Technically, anything is possible. Anything is possible, this is true. So the change in entropy for the universe has to be positive for a spontaneous process. Well, it's always increasing, right? Spontaneous of the universe, <laughs> yeah, let me go back and read that. For any spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe increases. Now I'm, there we go, okay, my iPad. Okay, so the, the change in entropy for the universe is equal to the change in entropy for the system plus the change in entropy for the surroundings. Makes sense, the universe is composed of the system and the surroundings. So we could have the entropy of the system decreasing as long as the entropy of the rest of the universe, the surroundings, increases. So how or why does freezing water increase the entropy of the surroundings? Well, freezing is exothermic, right? What does that mean? It releases heat. So energy is being released. Where does the energy go? Into the surroundings. It is dispersed. Entropy is a dispersal of energy. So the surroundings, because they're getting heat and that heat is being dispersed and spread out, the surroundings are in, um, experiencing an increase in entropy. So here we have um, our system is decreasing in entropy as the water freezes but that's causing an increase in entropy for the surroundings, and the sum of those is a slight positive, a slight increase in entropy. You okay with that? Now, freezing of water is spontaneous below zero. Is it spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius? No, it isn't. So there's a temperature dependence, right? The magnitude of the change in entropy for the surroundings due to that dispersal of energy is dependent on the temperature. The greater the temperature, the smaller the increase in entropy for a given amount of energy being dispersed. Because energy, um, I'm sorry, entropy, and entropy energy, they're very different. Entropy is a measure of energy dispersal, and the units are joules per Kelvin. So temperature has an effect on the amount of entropy. 
So if we look at water freezing and we see the change in entropy for the system, um, the entropy is going down. Um, the entropy for the surroundings will be positive and large at low temperatures. So that will offset the decrease in entropy from the water changing into a solid. But at higher temperatures, it's going to be still positive, and now it's going to be small, and it won't be enough to offset the decrease in entropy for the freezing. So low temperature, water freezing is spontaneous. At a higher temperature, because the increase in entropy to the surroundings decreases, now overall, the change in, in entropy is negative, and so it is not a spontaneous process. Does that make sense? So, just to clarify, we're only talking about if the temperature of the surrounding is higher than zero. We're, we're talking about the system and the surroundings being at a higher temperature. Because the system is going to be giving off more energy if at a higher temperature? So well, the so the book uses this analogy about receiving $1,000, right? If you're a millionaire and someone gives you $1,000, you're like, oh, that's nice. doesn't make much of a difference. If you're a nine-year-old who counts pennies and someone gives you $1,000, that's huge, right? So if the surrounding temperature, if the surroundings are at a low temperature, then putting a little bit of heat into them causes a large change in entropy. If the surroundings are at a higher temperature, higher overall thermal energy, adding more energy to that doesn't make much of a difference. It is still an increase in the entropy, but it's not as significant as over here. So this would be the nine-year-old, and this is the billionaire. Does that make sense? So then why would it be a negative again? Why would what be negative? The uh, change in uh, entropy of the universe for the higher temperature. Because you're adding the change in entropy for the system plus the change in entropy for the surroundings. Okay. One's right. positive, one's negative. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so in this case, the negative one is larger. So then on the previous slide, we were talking about um, how they both be positive, but the temperature dependency just minimize. Because in that sense, it seemed like they were just. Well, this this is negative. Yeah. Um, this will be positive either way, but it will be large or small depending on the temperature. Any other questions? So when the system exchanges heat with its surroundings, it changes the entropy of the surroundings. And we can use Q to quantify that change in entropy at constant pressure. So Q for the system, that is the heat being gained or lost by the system we're looking at. And it's that heat being dispersed into the surroundings that causes the entropy of the surroundings to increase. So we can say that delta S surroundings is proportional to negative Q cis. So the amount of energy being released by the surroundings. Does that make sense? An exothermic process where we have um, a negative Q cis is going to, bless you, increase the entropy of the surroundings. An endothermic process that's absorbing energy taking energy out of the surroundings is going to cause a decrease in entropy for the surroundings. So I think we've gotten mostly used to um, things that are negative as, as happening and maybe being good and energy leaving is negative, et cetera. One of the tricky things about entropy is it's, it's kind of flipped around. And so you kind of have to stop and think about it. You've got to be real careful with these negative signs. So the magnitude of the entropy change is inversely proportional to the temperature. The change is smaller when the temperature is higher. This is due to the heat being released, right? Because you're contributing that amount 
into this larger pool, and it just doesn't matter that much. So the change in entropy for the surroundings is proportional to 1 over the temperature. And then we've got this one. The, temper the delta S surroundings is proportional to negative Q cis. So we put both of those together. The change in entropy for the surroundings is equal to negative Q cis over T. Um, if, if we're using conditions of constant P and constant T, constant pressure, constant temperature, then the change in energy of the system is the same as the change in enthalpy, delta H, for the system. So now we've got this guy right here. Any questions? Maybe why, where are we going with this? So let's, let's look at this um, example. Nitrogen and oxygen reacting to form dinitrogen monoxide. And here's delta H for the reaction plus 163.2 kilojoules. So let's calculate the entropy change in the surroundings associated with this reaction occurring at 25 degrees Celsius. Well, we just learned an equation for that, right? Delta S for the surroundings is equal to what? Negative heat of reaction, because that's our system, divided by the temperature in kelvins. So this is going to be negative 163.2 kilojoules divided by the temperature in Kelvin, 298.15 Kelvin. So this is negative 0.54735. That would be units of kilojoules per Kelvin. That's not our standard unit, is it? So let's, and it came out to be kind of an, an unpleasantly small number, so let's go back and fix this, and instead of K, I'm going to write times 10 to the third. So that gives me a nicer number. So this is um, minus 547.4 joules per Kelvin. The entropy change. Yes? How do we know to put a negative in front of the delta H? Is that built into the equation? Built into the equation. So it doesn't matter if it's exothermic or endothermic? Whatever it is, you change the sign. So if, if it's um... So this is for the system, and we're talking about the change in entropy for the surroundings. So anytime you're doing system versus surroundings, it depends on what side of the transaction you're on. You change the sign. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Because this is an endothermic process, right? Energy is going into the reaction. Where's the energy coming from? The surroundings. So is energy being dispersed into the surroundings? No, it's being pulled out of, it's being concentrated into the reaction. That's a negative change in entropy. The entropy of the surroundings are going down, right? So determine the sign of the entropy change for the system. So the, the, the change in entropy for the system is not related to delta H. Did it go into 
Well, let's, let's look at the chemical equation. How many moles of things do I have here? Three. And how many moles do I have over there? Two. So entropy is going down. So the entropy is going down for the system. Right? So the sign of the entropy change for the system is negative. So determine the sign of the entropy change for the universe. Well, it's the system change plus the surroundings change. They're both negative, right? It's going to be negative. So is this going to be a spontaneous reaction? No. Not spontaneous. It's not spontaneous because the entropy of the universe is decreasing if this happens. And the entropy of the universe cannot decrease. If the change in entropy for the universe is positive, the reaction will be spontaneous. If the change is zero, it's just it's basically at equilibrium and nothing's really going to happen. Yep. So then just because the system's gaining energy in this case from its surroundings doesn't mean that it's going to have a positive entropy. entropy. Nope. Okay. Nope. So you want to look, you want to think in terms of, uh, so like with the, looking at the chemical equation with the, uh, the ways that it can be arranged, is that? Yeah, so to determine the, the sign of the entropy change for the system, we can look at the states of matter that are present here. If we have things changing from, from solids into gases, that would probably be an increase in entropy. Here we have uh, changes in numbers of particles. So we're going from three particles of gas to two. That is more orderly. There are fewer places to put energy. Okay, so entropy is going down. Is there any that prioritizes, like if we had like a state change, and then, but then if we happen to have... Uh, that's, that's a good question. How would you prioritize if you had conflicting things? Um, we're not going to go there? Yeah, yeah. We're not going to do that. That's mean. Any other questions? What the next? Yeah, okay. So here's something we can talk about. Do biological systems contradict the second law of thermodynamics? So they're taking energy from their surroundings. They're synthesizing large, complex biological molecules. So plants and animals tend to concentrate energy, not disperse it. How's that work? So you can't create energy, right, or destroy energy. So they concentrate energy, but do they also expend energy? Yeah, they do. All of us here in this room are just little furnaces, right? We're emitting energy, heat energy into the surroundings. Yes, we're doing all kinds of things that are decreasing ener entropy, right? But we're also dispersing heat into our surroundings, so overall, no, we're not violating the law of thermodynamics. Any questions about that?